Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Bead Me a Story, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make uh, little buttons that can fit on your glasses. Um, what these are gonna do is, uh, now that everybody's wearing a mask when they go out, you can put these onto your um, glasses, and you can actually hook your mask to this. So you can see, as it's out, when you put the mask on um, out here over your face, you just take the elastic parts and you slide it behind here instead of sliding it behind your ear, okay? And in today's lesson, we're, I'm gonna go through this um, pattern that's, uh, this is a three leaf stamp pattern and we're using the um, transparency of the uh, Ranger Archive inks to create this absolutely beautiful um, leaf pattern. But I just wanted to show you a couple more that I've done. Uh, this is using the gold trinket and I made this one look like metal. And then here's my black and white polka dot. This is probably the one I'd be most likely to wear. But um, anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So in order to start making our button part, um, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, cut out some circles. So I just have my little template here. And the size I like the best was the 2.25, which is two and a quarter inches, okay? So all you need to do is um, lay your template over your shrink plastic. I've got a uh, frosted color shrink plastic here. Okay, and just do one. And so you're gonna need at least two. One for either side of the glasses. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut these out. Okay, so once I have these cut out, what I did was, um, when I was first trying to figure out how to make these holes, I was using um, a round hole puncher, and, and I just kept punching holes until I felt like the hole was large enough. But um, I actually, I tried a bunch of things, and I finally found a better way. So what I like to do is take this little template one, and I just make a little line for myself on either side of the circle, and this just helps me to shoot for that area. Uh, when I'm making the holes. So what I found worked the best was this little uh, Provo Craft um, square hole punch. Um, I've tried to source this. I can't find these. I do see some on eBay, so you might have to look really hard to find these. But basically, all I'm going to do is um, I, I kind of, as I'm putting this on, I'm putting it over to the left side of this line for my first hole. I'm going to make three holes in a row. And after I make the first one, it's gonna get a little bit easier. But here I go with my first one. Okay, and you can see that one was rather hard to do. You really do have to squeeze. But then, it's probably hard to see this on camera. I'm trying to slide it about halfway across that first square that I just went through. Okay, and I'm gonna punch another hole. And then I'm gonna scoot it over to the right a little bit more. And I'm going to punch a third hole. Okay, so let me put some black behind here so you can see this background a little bit better. So that's basically the hole you end up with. And I really kind of like this because it has little ridges um, to hold our elastic in place once we're ready for that. Okay, so I'm going to do that on one side and then I'm going to come over to the other side. Again, this is not going to be perfect. We're just eyeballing this and doing the best we possibly can. Okay, so I did my first one, my second one, and my third one, okay? So although these are not perfect, you know, they're fairly well lined up. Um, they're somewhat similar in size, and don't forget this is going to be shrunk. So um, when it gets down to a smaller size, that'll be even less noticeable if it's not exactly perfect, okay? So let's move on to the decorating of our buttons. Okay, so I'm going to show you this, um, how to paint with stamps, uh, this pattern on two different types of shrink plastic. This one is frosted and this one is sanded. So it's somewhat frosted because of the sanding, but one side is shiny and the other side is sanded. And this works probably the best on this, but I like it on the frosted too. It also turns out very pretty. Um, it's a little bit deeper colors. Okay, so we're going to be using, um, Ranger Archival Inks in Vivid Chartreuse. Then we're going to move to Paradise Teal 
and then we're going to move to library green okay so our stamps i have one of these neat stamps that uh, julie haymaker recommends on her uh, shrink it website and this is great because it's got four different leaf patterns for you to use and then the other one i'm going to use is another leaf pattern so i'm going to use two from that block and i'm going to use uh this one as my last one and that's a, a stick and peel stamp but for the last color we we actually want it to be a little bit stronger so okay here's our first stamp pattern that we're going to use um, these kind of wide open leaves so first i'm going to do the frosted okay so get my get my stamp coated i'm gonna blot it okay i've got a little bit on there you can see that this green color is nice and light i'm gonna for the frosted one we're gonna flip it over and then we're going to get some more ink on our stamp blot again and then go on to the other side okay and as you do this you'll decide if you want to stamp a couple times you certainly can if you only want to stamp once um, whichever pattern you want to keep the most sparse that's fine now i'm going to move to this is the um, sanded one so i want to make sure that i'm working on the sanded side and this one i've learned i want to make this one a little bit stronger so i may stamp it twice and um, with this one it's actually going to show through from the back side so that's why i want to make sure that these are a little bit deeper impressions than i had on my frosted one so i'm done with this particular stamp i can wipe it off with my baby wipe keep your stamps clean okay get most of that ink off all right now the second stamp we're going to use now we're moving into this very large leaf stamp and with this one um, i'm going to get the paradise teal okay so let's bring the frosted over here first Now this color is much stronger, so you definitely want to make sure to blot with this one. That green color was so light that you may have been able to get away from away with some stuff. But this one you're definitely going to need. See, that's actually really dark there, but that's okay. But see how I didn't get a lot over here, so let's just come back and make sure that our patterns are getting placed on here fairly even. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. Now that one, because it was so dark, um, had a little bit of juiciness to it. So since I'm flipping it over here, I'm just gonna rub it in a little bit. Hopefully a little bit of it will that come off. And we're gonna do a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna blot. some on this side okay so with this one with the frosted one we actually had a lot more on here so I am going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to go ahead and get some of that juiciness out of here this was clean on the back side so make sure that you're using using your paper to its fullest I know they're scraps, but you know, we can use both sides of them, okay? So we've got both sides of that. Now on the frosted one, I'm just making sure that I'm still on that um, sanded side. much stronger and I like that like I said I want the ones that I'm doing in the uh, sanded to be much stronger I see I have a touch of juiciness over here and perhaps over here too so I'm gonna just put this under the sheet I'm working with trying to get my hands dirty 
Okay, and we'll get all our juiciness out. You can see this is already really starting to be very attractive. And this one, it's looking good too. Okay, so our final stamp is uh, this one here. Now you don't have to use all the same stamps I am. This is, um, you notice I started out with kind of a medium size leaf and then I moved to um, my, uh, a large size leaf and then this is a very small leaf. Okay, so that's kind of the thing is to get the leaves in, in a few different scales and that's what's gonna help you. Now this particular stamp, because this is one of those peel and stick stamps, this one, I'm not gonna blot it because I know that if I do, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna come off on here. So I'm actually gonna go directly onto my piece of work. Push. Okay, and see, you would think that would have been really strong, but it's not. I have actually um, sanded this stamp a little bit so that it, it takes takes ink a little bit better. And let's just make sure we get get some of that dark green all around. Okay, so uh, this is the frosted one. So again, we have to turn it over. Okay, and we have to make sure to do the back side of the frosted just as strong as we did the front side because the frosted, um, you're not gonna be able to see through it like you can the sanded. So the frosted one is now all finished. And now I'm gonna to move to the um, sanded one. Now the sanded one, this is when we wanna flip this over. And we wanna do this dark, much darker green on the um, opposite side. Okay. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, and now we are, um, we're finished with all our colors. Let's uh, make sure to cover our inks, clean off all your stamps, and we are ready to go ahead and shrink these. Okay, so now I have my wooden box in place and I have my shrink plastic inside the box. Uh, let, me, let me get something wood to hold this down. Um, I do find, you know, Julie always holds uh, the shrink plastic down with a wooden piece. And I do find, um, particularly on a shape like this, that part of the big reason it helps is not just so it doesn't fly around in here, but also so that I kind of hold it in the middle so that it can't get stuck on itself. So when you're doing a circle, if you just kind of hold it down gently in the middle, um, to control it, it all it also helps with that. So here we go. I turn on my heat gun. This is my first shrink of the day, so this one's taking just a little bit longer than it's going to. Once I get going and show you the second one. flip it over when I'm doing flat circles just to make sure um, that all sides of the piece get heated equally. Okay. And I uh, pop that out. I'm going to use my box to flatten it. Okay. And there is one. Okay. So let's do our second second style that we're doing. Obviously, I'm gonna do two frosted ones to go as a pair and two of uh, two of the sanded ones to become a pair. But I thought since I was doing this that it would be really nice to show you how the different um, shrink plastics are gonna behave with this and, and, and particularly how, how well the sanded one does with this technique. This one will probably fill it up a little bit faster because my heat gun is heated up and my box is heated up. And... Okay. 
sure we get the back side. So you can see here's the difference on these. Okay, and see how this one, you get a lot of the color and some of the pattern from back behind. This one's very subtle. I think when I do the next one, I'm gonna do uh, my back side. I'm gonna do it a little bit uh, darker, but you know, experiment with these and see how it goes. I can definitely see the leaves coming in through the background on this. And then this one, I had already done some of these in frosted, so I knew I was gonna have to do it on either side, but you see how, how pretty these colors are. Okay, so now we're gonna add our O-rings in and these will be ready to go. Okay, so now that I've completed my uh, buttons, which is the best way I have of phrasing what these are, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a rubber O-ring through and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first I wanted to show you that um, at beadmeastory.com. We carry a ton of different colors of O-rings. And in this particular size, this is the very largest size that we carry, but we do have these in uh, black, purple, celestial blue, which is dark blue, powder blue, gray, green, burgundy. So there's uh, several colors that you can use with these. This is a 20 millimeter O-ring, and you're gonna need that in order to stretch across this button. So for this one, you know, I, I'm kind of liking this powder blue with it. So let's, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna squeeze this rubber O-ring in half. Okay. I'm gonna push that through that first hole. Now I'm gonna take this and squeeze it again. This one's a little harder getting it through this side, but it does work. Okay, see how I kind of get it to curve? And then I can push it through the other side. Okay, and then um, now this is kind of like a button. Okay, so I just want to make sure you understand that these rubber O-rings do stretch and they're gonna stretch to go on your glasses. Okay, so I'm gonna take my glasses off real quick and just show you that we're just gonna hook it through here, hook it through here. We do want them just a little on the, on the tightish side, okay? So see how they sit right on the side of your glasses. So this way, once you put your glasses back on, um, your mask, you're gonna hook it right behind this button. And when you hook it behind the button, it's attached you know, to your glasses and not to your ears. Um, I've had a lot of requests for these by people uh, who wear hearing aids especially. So um, the, these are really good. You see, they don't mo move around a whole lot, but um, they're really attractive, really pretty when you make them this way. And uh, this is a great way, if your ears are bothered by your masks, to uh, uh, have a solution for that. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll join me for my next video um, at beadmeastory.com. Thanks so much. Okay, I just want to add one little extra portion to this video. As I was uh, mounting some of my O-rings through my buttons, I realized um, on some of them, that the hole was just a little bit too small, um, particularly the sanded paper that seemed to shrink a little bit more. So I wanna show you what my solution was for making my hole a little bit larger. Um, I took a piece of sandpaper and I'm gonna roll this up tight. Just, you want a piece that's just about the right size to fit through your hole. Okay. And once I get it through this hole, I'll be sanding both sides. I just pull it back and forth. Okay, and that, that is gonna get rid of uh, these little ridges that we had from using a square cutter. And that's gonna make it large enough to be able to uh, fit the O-ring through the hole. Um, again, you want it tight. So I think this is a really good solution for um, you know fixing any problems that you might run into as far as uh, you know, the shrink plastic shrinking at a little bit different rates and the holes being a little bit smaller, or perhaps the way you spaced your uh, hole cuts as you were doing them. I think you want them a little bit more bunched up as opposed to trying to spread them out more. So uh, there's a workaround for that. And if you find your holes too small, that's what you can do about it.